In this video, we're going to take a look at dimensions in Creole parametric sketches and how we can modify them and create new ones. When you create geometry in the sketch mode of Creole parametric, Creo will automatically put dimensions on it. So for example, here I drew a rectangle and we can see that I automatically have a length and a width dimension. I can modify these dimensions to be the size that I want. This is where the idea of parametric modeling comes in. I change the dimensions and the model updates. However, by default, Creo does not lock these dimensions, which means I can actually click and drag my geometry and goof those dimensions up. So what I strongly encourage you to do is have Creo lock those dimensions. To do so, I'm going to go to File and Options. Then select the Sketcher option here on the left. And here in the Dimensions panel, I'm going to tell Creo to lock modified dimensions and lock user defined dimensions. Then click OK. I'll click Yes to save my config file and click OK to save it in the default location. So let's try another rectangle here. I'll draw the rectangle. I get my temporary dimensions. I'll put in a value and enter. And you can actually see that this dimensional value is red now, indicating that it's been locked. So I'll go ahead and adjust this dimension as well. And once more, I can see that they're locked and I no longer can modify those dimensions. Basically, I can just move this around since I haven't yet constrained it in space. Let's take a look at dimensioning a circle. I'll create a circle and somewhere here in space in my sketch mode and middle mouse button to complete it. And I can see that I'm given a diameter dimension. I can go ahead and double click on it, put in a new value and press enter. And we can see I now have a circle of that particular size. I can also change the type of dimension I have here. So let's say that I wanted a circle with a radius of five and an eighth. So I'm going to select the dimension, then choose this button right here to switch it to a radius dimension. Now I can go ahead and modify this to be five and an eighth as my radius. As you can see, even though I put in 5.125, it's displaying it as 5.13. This is another setting that I can change. I'll go to File and Options. Then once again, the Sketcher. And you can see that by default, it's going to show three decimal places for my dimensions. If I want to increase that, I can. And once again, I'll save the changes to my config file. While it doesn't affect this particular one, it will change any of the ones going forward. To modify this one, I can select the dimension, hold my right click, and then turn off round display value. Now I will see the full dimension. When I create a new sketch or part, this is when I'm going to see my new settings take hold. So if I select new and create another new sketch, I'll create another circle, and we can see now that it is going to give us three decimal places by default. Next, I'm going to use the line command to place a few lines on screen, and then I will dimension them. As you can see, Creo gave me a length and a height dimension for this triangle, but you're not necessarily stuck on the dimensions that Creo gives you. You can place your own. For example, let's say that I knew I wanted the bottom leg of the triangle to be five inches long, and I wanted this to be a 30 degree angle. Well, I can go ahead and modify this dimension to be five. And then instead of the height dimension, I'm going to come in with an angle dimension. So for this, I will just use my dimension tool. This is an all encompassing dimension tool. So if I want to find the angle between two lines, I'll select one of the lines and then the second line, and then I'll middle mouse button out here in space to place that dimension. Now I can put in 30 degrees and my sketch is fully constrained. So when you're dimensioning sketches, your goal is to always get rid of all of the temporary dimensions. That's when you know that everything is fully constrained. This can be done either through dimensional constraints or geometric constraints like my vertical and horizontal here. Let's look at another example. Here I have another part and you can see that Creo gave me the dimensions of each of these surfaces. Let's say I wanted to use baseline dimensioning and dimension everything over from the left side. Well, I can start with the first dimension 
and maybe I'll make this one too. And then for my next dimension, I'll ignore the one that's already there and I'll make my own. So I'll choose the dimension tool. I'll select the vertical line on the left and the vertical line here. Then I will middle mouse button to place my dimension. Now you can see that that temporary dimension disappeared because it's now being driven by this dimension. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing one more time. Actually, I already have this dimension down here on the bottom. I can use it. Or if I didn't notice it, that's okay. I can go ahead and create my own from line to line, middle mouse button to place it, and then place my next dimension. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing vertically as well. So I'm going to dimension from this line to this line, middle mouse button, type in a value and enter. What if I typed in the wrong value? Well, then I can just double click on the dimension here and type in a different value. So for my next dimension, again, I can just go from the bottom line to the next line, middle mouse button to place it. Maybe I'll go seven for that one. And then finally, maybe I'll go 10 and a half for this last one over here. Now you can click and drag on your dimensions text to move these around to get them to fit nicely. Keep in mind at this point, we're not creating final detail drawings. We're just dimensioning the geometry. So later when we actually create drawing files, we can get a little more picky on our dimension placement. Let's take a look at one more shape here with an angled surface on it. You can see that Creo this time gave me an angular dimension as well as some linear dimensions. And I wanna show you how I can create an aligned dimension. If I choose the dimension tool and I pick the two endpoints of this angled line and then middle mouse button out in space, I'll either get a vertical dimension if I middle mouse button out here, or if I did the same two endpoints and middle mouse button up top, then I'll get the horizontal dimension. But if what I want is the aligned dimension, I can choose the dimension tool. And once again, either pick the two endpoints or pick the line itself and middle mouse button close to that line. Now you can see it's going to give me an aligned dimension. So now the angular dimension goes away because that is now driven by these horizontal and vertical lengths, as well as the length of this line here. One last thing I wanna look at is what to do when you're sketching in a part mode. So these examples have all been in a sketch environment, so there's been no origin to dimension two, but I'm going to create a new part. I'm going to go to new and part and okay. I'm going to sketch on one of my datum planes here. And now when I create a shape such as a rectangle, not only am I going to have the length and width dimensions, but I'm also going to have dimensions that reference the origin planes. I could of course adjust those or knowing this, when I create my shape, I'll make sure that I constrain to the origin. So for example, when I choose my rectangle, I'll snap to the origin point and draw from there. And that way I only have to specify the length and the width of the rectangle. Or I undo that. Maybe I choose the center rectangle. Then I'll pick the origin as my center point and now I have a rectangle that is centered around the origin point. And then of course I can adjust my dimensions and see my part update. Once again, our goal here is to always get rid of all of the temporary dimensions. Once all the temporary dimensions are gone, we know that our drawing is fully constrained. That concludes this look at working with sketch dimensions in Creo Parametric.